Should the New England Patriots bench quarterback Mac Jones? What say you? Let us know in the comments. Type Y for yes, they should, or N for no, they should not. A lot of rumors, a lot of reports out there. We're diving in here on Patriots Today. I'm Harrison Graham. Let's kick off today's show. And you have to wonder if it is time to make a change at quarterback. And listen, an ESPN insider did not rule out the possibility of the Patriots making a change at QB1. You look at what Mac Jones has done this year. It's, it's just not good enough. The completion percentage is fine. You know, the yards, it's okay. But it's like, you know, like 210 yards a game. TD to interception ratio, not good enough. QBR below average. You know, it's just – it's it's average at best play. In reality, it's not starting quarterback play, at least not high-level starting quarterback play in this league. And Dan Graziano uh, had this to say. He said that, I don't get the sense that Jones is in any danger of being benched for this week's game against a suddenly more toothless Washington defense. This report came before that game. But there are some in the building who wouldn't mind giving Bailey Zappi a shot – if Jones doesn't show improvement soon. Now, I don't know if you bench Mac right now. I probably don't. But the fact that that report came in before last week, and then obviously you could only score 17 points against the Washington team that just traded two of its best players in Montez Sweat and Chase Young, not the best look. Rolly and I have been on record saying Mac Jones probably is not the long-term answer at quarterback. But as I bring Nick Roloff, Super Patriots fan Roley in here. The biggest drawback I've had for benching Mac Roley is who are you turning to? I know that report says Bailey Zappi. Like, to me, Bailey Zappi is just a poor man's Mac Jones. Like, it's not like he offers some clear higher ceiling in some area of play. I know there was that two-week stretch where Bailey Zappi started last season. The Patriots won both games against the Lions and Browns. But if you just watch that game, two-game sample size, a lot of it was just like in the flow of the offense. People were running wide open. Matt Patricia actually somehow called good games against the Browns and Lions. And then obviously the infamous Monday night game where Zappi comes storming in on Monday night football against the Bears, leads two touchdown drives in replace of Mac Jones. But outside of that, Zappi's been bad. He was bad in training camp. He was bad in the preseason. He didn't even make the 53. Like, Bailey they Zappi cut his ass. ass. So, yes, I do believe that Mac Jones is not the future at quarterback for New England, and they are going to need a new starting quarterback for next season. There's just too much wrong with Mac, whether it be his lack of arm strength or his footwork has been regressing, making bad decisions. And if Belichick's gone, you probably assume you get a new quarterback as well. But my thought on the situation, there is no reason to turn from Mac Jones because the next option isn't any better. And here's my thought on this as well, Harrison. Let Mac maybe try to show something. So if you do want to move on from him, which you should, you can potentially get more out of him if you trade him. Yeah, look. Even if he plays not great down the stretch, I think benching him hurts his trade value even more uh, than if he does play. I think the upside is he plays pretty well, and you can at least hopefully maybe get like a third-round pick for him. I mean, Trey Lance went for a fourth, so I think you'd get at least a fourth uh, for Mac Jones, so keep that in mind as well. Now, you look at last year, Bailey Zappi. The raw stats look okay, 65.5%, QB rating at 93. Um, you know, there were some moments, but – you just look at the player, and he doesn't have starting quarterback traits. He's bad, man. He's undersized. He has decent accuracy, but he can't throw the ball down the field at all. Um, again, I just think he's a poor man's Mac Jones. He's smaller than him. He has a weaker arm than him. He doesn't survey the field as quickly as him. Like, nothing he does is superior to what Mac does. So what are you really expecting – Bailey Zappi to do. If you bench Mac Jones, I got a couple of different ideas that I would go in before I would uh, put Bailey Zappi in. But maybe you want him in there. If you want Bailey Zappi to start, type four for yes, number four, or type HN for hell no. Roly, to be clear, you are not on the Zappi train. Oh, I'm typing my HNs. There is no way that I'm turning 
the rest of the season to Bailey Zappi. I might refuse to watch if we're going to be honest. That would just <laughs> not be fun football. But you mentioned a couple of names out there. You have a guy on the active roster as that third quarterback in Will Greer, who played very, very well in the preseason for the Dallas Cowboys. Could he be someone the Patriots turn to? I mean, he played well in the preseason for Dallas, like I mentioned. And Listen, the former West Virginia quarterback, maybe he shows something down the stretch. Look, I mean, just from an entertainment standpoint, if you're going to bench Mac, I'd rather watch Will Greer. He's going to take some chances. He's probably going to throw some interceptions, but it's much more entertaining than dink and dunk zappy. Like, Will Greer will at least throw the football downfield. And, hell, bring up Malik Cunningham. Do a little two-QB system. See if you can – Find a project role for Cunningham. He's clearly not a drop-back type of quarterback, but you want to go into full tank mode, do it with Will Greer and Malik Cunningham. Don't do it with Bailey Zappi. At least with those two guys, there's something entertaining. And on a serious note, maybe Cunningham shows you something and there is some role for him moving forward because he is such a good athlete. No, I'm being dead serious when I say this, Harrison. It's going to kind of close out our QB talk on today's show, but... There is just no way you can convince me that turning the rest of the season to Bailey Zappi is beneficial to anyone, Any, anyone in the building. The organization knows that he is not going to be the franchise quarterback. It only hurts your weapons as well. And hurts the trade gonna, value for Mac. You're not going to be able to fully evaluate some of the guys already on the roster if you want to bring them back in the offseason or just keep them on the roster throughout the offseason. It would benefit no one. Malik Cunningham and Will Greer, at least you don't know what you got, so you can try to see something. Bailey Zappi, hell no. Please do not turn to Bailey Zappi. We'll, we'll see what happens. And look, regardless of what happens on Sundays, if you want to have more fun on your Sundays than watching a struggling Patriots team, prize picks, the best daily fantasy sports app out there. It is daily fantasy made easy. And Hey, maybe you're kind of worn out on the NFL. Well, basketball is underway. The NBA is back. College basketball season is underway as well. You can make entries there. It's time to cash in and make up to 25 times your money on your entries with prize picks. All you got to do is select two to six players on any given entry, and if they will go for more or less than their prize picks projections. We have a three-player entry here. Mac Jones, more than 217 and a half passing yards. This week, Demario Douglas, somebody's got to catch the football. He's been pretty good lately. We'll take more on his receiving yards. Less on the Jonathan Taylor rushing yards. He's been a little nicked up since he's been back uh, for uh, Indianapolis. So uh, we'll see if the Patriots can hold him in check just a little bit. Get started with Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100. Join rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz, and several other Prize Picks players and start placing your entries today. It doesn't matter the sport. Prize Picks is the best way to play daily fantasy sports. All right, uh, the Patriots have signed a player, a wide receiver, to the practice squad. We will tell you who it is. Aaron Wilson had the note that they are signing TJ Luther to their practice squad per a league source. And Look, uh, not much note here. The Patriots released him from the practice squad a few weeks back. He is back in the fold. Obviously, the Patriots wide receiver unit isn't that great. I don't think Rolly or I think TJ Luther is some answer here, but um, it is a familiar face back in the building. So I wanted to pass that news along to you. And listen, that's why I subscribe to the channel. We're eight subs away from 6,100 subscribers. So hit that sub button. Regardless of how big or how small the news is, we're going to cover it here on this channel. We have a juicy video coming tomorrow around Bill Belichick, so stay tuned for that. Sub today if you want more Patriots news and rumors videos. All right, uh, you look at the receiver depth chart now here, Roly, and obviously uh, TJ Luther isn't going to you know, make or break this football team, but it continues to be something we talk about, and it's just not good, man. I, it's, it's, you know... It's a bad group. Demario Douglas, nice find in the sixth round. He is not a number one receiver in the National Football League. He's just not. Um, so you got to continue to evaluate that position moving forward and find some game breakers, which is why we talked about on Monday's show, Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors is a couple of options if the uh, Patriots want to get that type of dude in the building next year. 
Yeah, and listen, when you look at that wide receiver core, it is ugly in every facet that you try to find, really. If you try to think of any positive, outside of Demario Douglas, there is none. Devontae Parker is overpaid. Juju Smith-Schuster is overpaid. I mean, you're having to rely on Jalen Rager. Yes, <laughs> Jalen Rager on Sundays. That's good. a bad way. And you were hoping to get something out of the former second-round pick from Baylor, Tyquan Thornton. And in his career, which is essentially a season through two games, he's battled a lot of injuries. He hasn't been able to be on the field often. He has really just stunk it up to high heaven. I had a lot of good hopes for the speedy wide receiver out of Baylor, but his route running is horrible. If you saw the viral clip from Sunday's game against Washington, he tried to do an out route against Emmanuel Forbes, a first-rounder from this past NFL draft and took about seven chop steps before breaking out. The guy's <laughs> route running ability is absolutely horrific. And it's disappointing, man, because he has speed, he has length, but he just can't run routes. I still can't believe Belichick took him in the second round. If, if, if Thorne could run routes, the combination of length and speed be really would be good. deadly. But he can't, he can't route run. He can't do it. He was only good in college because he would just run by people. Belichick and company thought they could teach him. You can't. Bad look for Tyquan Thorne and especially Bill Belichick. I mean, they went full Al Davis with that pick. I mean, let's be honest. They saw the 40-yard dash. We're like, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to trick the rest of the league. We're going to take this guy in the second when Mox have him going in like the fifth. And uh, not good. Not good. I mean, not you don't good. even have to be a great route runner. You just have – if you could run three routes at an adequate level with that speed, you can play for a long time in the NFL. He can't do it. It's a problem. The only thing he's good at is running a straight line on a vert route and just hopefully that the safety for that opposing defense actually thinks he has to guard him. I mean, they should put him at two defenders. They should put him at kick return, get some value out of him. Uh, there, there is nothing. Speaking of punt returner, so, Demario Douglas, I love him. Not a good punt returner. Tough scene. Tough scene. Do you guys still believe in Tyquan Thornton? I never did, if I'm being completely honest. I B for believe. I did, Harry, for Type a little B bit. For I don't. did. Well, if Belichick drafts a receiver, you just have to assume it's the wrong one because <laughs> that's, uh, that's how it's gone recently. But uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel again. we got a Bill Belichick video coming out tomorrow, a big rumor surfacing before their matchup this weekend. We will address that here on this show. Hit that subscribe button and join us for more videos.